this turkey, I want to make sure I have room for him. It's so easy to run out of space. And see, I'm just drawing the outer shape that I see. Notice I'm keeping my pencil pretty much on the paper. Even though I do it with a pen or I do it with the pencil, it's continuous contour line drawing. And so what happens as you look at the subject and keep your line going, you actually kind of connect your brain with your hand. As soon as you pick up your pencil, you kind of lose that flow. What I'm looking at is where does that line up? Kind of lines up with this big group of feathers. Their beak and his neck. His waddler. And then this comes around. There. So I've got that outer shape. See that? And then his head, top of his head is kind of lining up with this. I'm always looking at where, where things line up. I want to push that up a little more. There we go. So here's the top of his head. And then there's an opening. What a funny looking head. I wish. So now I've got his, his whole body shape in there, and I can erase the pencil line. He's hilarious. Now I'm going to go into the center and just kind of see where those groupings of feathers land. This is rounded a little more. So by seeing the shapes better, you're going to be able to draw better knowing what to look for. So I've got my, my groupings of feathers. He's fun. He's not as hard as he looks if you just start with that outer shape. The blues that I see on him are almost more of a turquoise. So that's thalo blue green shade. And that could have something to do with the light, the way it's hitting him. I don't want to go too dark. Here's some lavender, some cobalt blue. And I'll probably keep it in the coffee range. Even that's a little dark. I'm not trying to get all the feathers in. I'm just looking for shadow shapes. I yeah. see shapes along the back of his feathers. I don't know if he's blue or if that's just the lighting on him. But I'll take it because it gives gives some interest. I'm going to try and get some of this working with just paint. Let's see, he's got a lot of blue on his head. In here, he's got some gold color in his feathers. I'm going to use yellow ochre. I don't want it to be too intense. And right through here. See, I'm almost using my paintbrush like a pen. And I see some here. I see some down here. right here using my paintbrush to draw. Let's give him a red waddler. Needs that. So every painting doesn't have to be super finished. Maybe your style is loose. Kind of loose and free. You'll find it the more you paint. I was going to say, 
my grandmother, who actually started me with watercolors, you know, I always talk about my aunt, who's my mentor, but my grandmother is the first one who actually sat me down with the paintbrush and had me paint. She painted right next to me and we painted roses. Well, she started painting, my aunt taught her, when she was 65, when she retired. And she was still having art shows when she was 92. And so as I always say, it's never too late to start. You can, you've got lots of paintings in you and you just go one at a time and experiment, have fun with it. You may find something that you really love to paint. And some things you won't love to paint. Okay, the background is pretty warm. And it's lighter at the top. So I've got my yellow ochre and some permanent brown and some orange. And see, it's pretty thick. And we want to see that turkey. You can't really see much of him because he's white against a white background. And that that won't quite do it. So I'm bringing in permanent brown, maybe some orange, so that he can stand out from the background. If you add green to your brown, you almost make it burnt umber. It's not quite as warm. Let's see, I don't want to have a hard edge. He's got feathers, so I'm going to you know, loosen up that edge. I'm going to just leave some of this unfinished rather than go clear to the edge. See how that background is actually what's making the feathers um, look like feathers and bring that turkey out. Where's my permanent brown and green? They want, I don't want it to all be so bright. Basically just using permanent brown and green and varying my My brown just a little bit. There we go. See, I'm coming in with my brush towards that edge, so I have a rough edge. I need that dramatic value change to help him come forward. A little thicker. I can even add neutral tint to get a darker color. We just need a darker dark right in there. So you can kind of see his beak. I save the whites. I put in the shadow shapes, the details, and then I painted the color around it. 